Good morning, folks. Your chance to get involved in the campground at Observer Ranch begins today. We've got a mini version of a serious space weather event, and we've got a window into how the sun hugs the earth. But let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. Not exactly a super quiet day, despite the lack of major flares and eruptions. Small filaments are releasing all over, and in the middle of this sequence, you should have seen the pop near the bright central active region. The decaying sunspot group near dead center had a small pop of the umbral fields arching above it. It was barely a flare, not at all able to get up out of B-class range. But this snap is what we'll be looking for, the bigger version, in the coming years. If this flare had been bigger, we would have a solid CME on its way to Earth now. Solar wind from the departing equatorial coronal hole is arriving now, and it is relatively weak, barely creeping to 400 kilometers per second, and the geomagnetic field handling that just fine. Another big quake struck yesterday, this one well south in the South Shetland Islands of Antarctica. Originally came in at 7.3 and then was downgraded. We'll go to the science articles starting out at TRAPPIST-1. They are determining that the planets are all similarly constructed despite their varying size, and especially in the outer four planets, they see potential to be tiny versions of Earth. Despite their version of the habitability chart, this is mostly based on human life habitability. If we are talking about microbes, any kind of alien, the region under the ice on H, the outer tiny planet, is still my favorite chance to find them. Basically, the solar flaring at Trappist concerns me for those planets, but under the ice on H, it would be shielded. Up next is a cool animation of what they think happened to Saturn over its evolution. They say that during its end formation process, Titan began working its rotation and tilt, bringing it to what it looks like now. Of course, the article stops before they extrapolate this to the other planets with moons in the solar system, but hey, baby steps. Now folks, we're going to do climate science from the other side to demonstrate the failures that we have been discussing. This paper clearly states global warming is now over one degree and that natural forcing is negligible. It's all humans' fault. Folks, it was as simple as seeing which models they are using. Then, going and finding those models online, which by the way are also in your link list today so you don't have to go hunt them down, and they took the easy road of CMIP6. Solar irradiance, solar irradiance, solar irradiance. Folks, before the 2022 IPCC report, scientists are still allowed to use the data set with no particles, no solar wind, no CMEs, no cosmic rays, and no geomagnetic storm effects. Yes, if you ignore the sun's biggest inputs to Earth, you are likely to end up thinking global warming is our fault. But time and technology are allies of the truth. In a bombshell work out of the GRL, we find an MMS-based measurement of the IMF field energy to particle energy at the magnetosphere. This is even a step beyond the solar wind and general particle forcing. This is the field coupling, where the interplanetary magnetic fields hit the Earth's fields and the energy is instantly transformed into the Earth's system. Folks, in current climate models, not only is the particle forcing struggling to get a voice, but the field energy coupling is incredible, completely missing from the models, and as much as 5 to 11 percent in reality. Folks, the atmosphere of this planet is entirely driven by the sun. End of story. Well, folks, there's a new look to ObserverRanch.com after Kat taught herself WordPress Elementor in one day. And now, in addition to the information and accreditation, now the Make It Happen link is active and frankly, there's no need for your money to go to Kickstarter or another third party. It doesn't come to me either. Every cent of your contributions are going to the campground. All of it. It's your one chance to make your mark on the campground permanently. Other cool rewards, including a personalized shout out in these morning news, check them all out at the link. This will be the new home for the observers, the last place we can all meet and be together while we still can. Conference weekend will become campground season with the observers, and it will finally be much more than science on a screen. We greatly appreciate your support. ObserverRanch.com. This is the biggest thing we've ever tried to do for you guys, and we can't do it without you. But we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.